This season on Navigating Abroad, we're back at the World AI Festival in Cannes, talking to some of the brightest leaders in artificial intelligence. We'll be delving into the important questions around the impact of AI on our world, what the ethical implications are, and how we can ensure these technologies are used for good. On this episode, I sit down with Fred Werner, the Head of Strategic Engagement at the United Nations. Fred is an accomplished association management professional with particular expertise in telecommunications. He specializes in strategic communications, community building, and international relations, and has a strong passion for his work. He also played a pivotal role in the creation of the groundbreaking AI for Good Global Summit, demonstrating his commitment to driving positive change in the industry. Hi, Fred. It's wonderful to see you here at day two of the World AI Can Festival. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy agenda here on day two to join us. Um, how was your first day of the event? It was great. And yeah, first of all, th thank you for having me. And what, what a great location. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, first day I, I thought was really good. Um, we kicked off with uh, an AI for Good panel where we basically shared the good word of AI for Good with the AI community here. And we were lucky to have with us uh, I think a unique mix of profiles, which is very symbolic of AI for good. So we had a, an inventor, an artist, a musician, uh, LJ Rich. Uh, we had a pioneer in autonomous dri driving, Bryn Balcom. And then we had the first female uh, PhD from, in AI and machine learning from the UAE, from uh, TII. So I think it was a, a really good mix of profiles that really portrays what AI for good is all about. And of course, you were moderating and did a great job. So all in all, a good start. Absolutely. And it was so impressive to see all the different ways you guys are touching the AI for good community from different technology innovations to different regions and the impacts that you're having. Can you tell us a little bit more about the UN's AI for good initiative? Yeah, so AI for good was built on the premise that we have about 10 years to achieve the sustainable development goals, but time is running out quick. And AI holds great promise to achieve many of the goals and targets. So anything from uh, climate change to affordable health care, to education, to gender equity, or more high-tech solutions like autonomous driving and smart cities, you know, the potential is, is definitely there. And in fact, they did a, a recent mapping in the scientific journal uh, Nature Communications where they mapped uh, what SDGs can positively impact or how AI can positively impact the SDGs and how they can negatively impact the SDGs. And through that mapping, they saw that 154 of the targets could be positively impacted and about 59 could be negatively impacted. So on the positive side, you have things like mapping poverty from space or you know increasing agricultural yields, uh, reducing uh, road fatalities by you know assistive uh, technologies in, in cars, um, you know increasing uh, education, a uh, huge uh, amount of use cases for, for healthcare, mobility, uh, accessibility. So the, the use cases are, are definitely there. Um, on the flip side, of course, there's you know, the fear of uh, job loss through automation, um, but also other things like uh, ethics, uh, bias uh, issues with uh, data sets that are not inclusive, uh, privacy, uh, surveillance, and you know, basically the risk of further deepening the digital divide. But the good news is that there's more positive use cases than negative use cases, so it's all about how you use the technology. And simply put, the goal of AI for good is to identify practical applications of AI that exist today to advance the sustainable development goals and help scale the solutions for, for global impact. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have seen some of the best innovation and you want to make sure it gets the furthest reach out to the people in the most need for it. And it seems like you're making wonderful progress. This, is, this will be your fifth annual event uh, this year in Geneva. Do you mind telling us a little bit about the AI for Good conference that's upcoming? Yeah, so we the first summit kicked off in 2017, and it was more of an experiment, but we were like amazed at the level of interest in AI for Good at that time. And as the community grew, the event doubled in size, then it doubled in size again, and it was going to double in size again, but then, you know, COVID hit, and then we basically had to re rethink our, our whole model. But you know, instead of waiting for blue skies and no one really knew how long the pandemic would, would, would last, we said, well, let's just put all our content online and see what happens. So now we're doing in the order of 150 events online every year. Wow. And that really, if you look at all the touch points on what we're trying to do in terms of being the most inclusive, neutral, global and diverse AI for good community in the world, going virtual really increased the number of participants from about 2,000 people in the physical event to reaching about 300,000 people online. 
of a number of countries participating went from about 100 to 183, so that's almost all the countries in the world. Uh, very importantly, the, the, the gender balance increased a lot because this, all of the bottlenecks that prevent women from participating in events, whether it's home life, family, it, it, it's all, a whole number of issues. All the invisible labor. The invisible barriers. Um, not all of them, but a lot of that friction got reduced because online you just connect to a Zoom call and there you are. So our gender balance increased to almost 50-50, which was great. And uh, developing countries, they have their own challenges, right? They can't just fly to Geneva, so they, they could also participate virtually much more easily. So almost all the touch points were good for AI for Good. Having said that, um, there is a need to reconnect in person like we, we've done you know, these past few days. Yes. Uh, so we, we're gonna keep the online layer going. So still doing 150 events a year online, but doing uh, basically a landmark summit in Geneva. That's gonna be the 6th, 7th of July and getting people to really reconnect and really focus on that reconnection, the networking, solutions, matchmaking. And that's what the summit's gonna be all about. Yeah, and this is a partnership between governments and the private sector and the NGO spaces all coming together to convene to find global solutions to challenges. So for our listeners that tend to be in the private sector and more executive uh, leadership roles, what are ways they can contribute to this overall uh, benefit that the organization yeah, brings? Yeah, so the, I think the AI experts in our community they would be the first ones to say, you can't leave AI to the AI experts, and you have to bring as many people to the table as possible. So a lot of efforts have been made to bring, definitely bring industry, because they're the innovators, they have the tech, they have the money, they're moving the fastest. Uh, but also bringing industry combined with uh, academia, uh, with civil society, with NGOs, with our, our member states, with our 40 UN partners, but also bringing in the creatives. So the, the artists, uh, the athletes, the performers, the creative thinkers, and all these people come to AI for good because everyone should have a voice in how AI is gonna shape our, our future if we want a chance of moving it in the right direction. But we definitely rely a lot on industry uh, for, for expertise and, and also for funding, yeah. And so for folks that are interested about learning more, if they wanted to participate in a virtual event, what would be the best way for them to connect? Well, I would go to aiforgood.itu.int. Uh, that's the starting point. And there is an engage page. Uh, that's where we, we receive all our proposals for sessions. And it used to be we'd get a one proposal a, a month, and then it became once a week, and then it's once a day. And, I think we probably get five proposals a day now, so which is a good thing. Wonderful. But we also have to sift through all of that and start to... But the good thing is by going online, we're able to cover much wider range of topics because we have basically almost every working day we have a chance to, to do something. And, you know, uh, it's, it's a very sort of community-driven uh, process where we have the 40 UN partners who, who are all partners and they're contributing in terms of speakers, knowledge, data, expertise, but they're also there to learn. They, they don't have all the answers either. And um, all I would say is get in touch, uh, have a good proposal and help to bring the people together needed to make that happen. And it's as easy as that. It's not a pay for play event. It's, it's free for all to use. And uh, so all we need is people and ideas. Sounds amazing. Can you share some of the success stories that you've had by bringing this diverse group together to look at global challenges? Yeah, certainly. So well, one of our catchphrases is, you know, we're, we're not a talk shop and we're action oriented. So we're not just an event for the sake of being an event. And uh, over the years, we've generated a number of AI for good uh, pre-standardization efforts. So the first one being uh, AI for Health with the World Health Organization. And basically they're working on, maybe to backtrack a bit, if you're looking at drug development, it takes years and years and millions if not billions of dollars to, to, to get a drug approved. At the same time, you have all these high potential AI health applications, algorithms, things you can actually do with your mobile phone going up on the iStore every day without any kind of oversight. And it's not to say they're good or bad, there's just no means for evaluating if they're good or bad. So they're basically working on a a benchmarking framework for the testing and evaluation and for the efficacy of AI for Health algorithms so that if you are uh, a government or a, a city or a hospital or someone who needs to know, you know, what is this use case? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it going to work for me? Or does it work on men and women? Does it work on people of different skin colors? Does it work on children and adults and the elderly? Does it work in developing countries? These are things that are being thought about at AI for Good and that's 
you know, important work that's taking place there. And since we created that focus group, we've done another, a number of focus groups. So for example, uh, AI and natural disaster management with uh, WMO and, and UNEP, and basically looking at how all the use cases in which AI can help to you know, predict, manage, and mitigate natural disasters. And there, there's so many, so this is really important work. Likewise, we have another one on uh, AI and agriculture. Uh, working with FAO and you know you have all these uh, use cases where if you combine satellite imagery with IOT with big data with robotics and, and AI to basically do more effective farming right and uh, so, so that that's happening we have one on AI and autonomous driving as well so they're basically working on the equivalent of a, a driving license for uh, autonomous cars and not, not that the car would have an actual license but the idea is that at a minimum any kind of autonomous system that's deployed in a car should behave and perform equal or better to a, a human driver. So that's sort of the, the philosophy behind that group. And um, on top of that, we have uh, challenges. So we have machine learning and 5G challenge. We have a geo satellite uh, imagery challenge. Uh, we, we have a, a number of uh, tiny ML. So for example, you, you know, we heard a lot about edge computing and uh, federated learning and, and you know, basically AI happening on the edge, and uh, so that they, they launch challenges. So, for example, how can you use tiny sensors with microphones to detect the level of rainfall just from the sound or the number of mosquitoes, for example? So, all these like really niche uh, projects that are happening there, but great solutions coming out of that. And last but not least, we have the Innovation uh, Factory, which is a year-long startup pitching competition. So, any startup that's using AI in a positive way to advance the SDGs uh, can basically apply, they can compete, uh, they do their pitches to mentors and judges, and this is happening all year long. And, and that's actually yielding really practical solutions that need the visibility that could be deployed today. So it sounds like you're convening together the, the all the stakeholders that are looking for how do we look for multinational solutions that actually impact the benefit of humanity in as frictionless of a way as possible. And so for people that are interested in learning more about the challenges in other places, trying to solve similar problems, it's probably a place to learn. For people that are interested in investing in innovation and seeing what the latest and greatest is on the startup front is, have a place, and then also for folks that want to take some of their skill sets and apply it to something that they're personally passionate about in terms of the environment or improving outcomes for women and children or uh, healthcare outcomes. This is a place you can come to lend your talent. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the, the there's a sense of urgency with the community where, you know, we're already 2023, so it's seven years till the SDGs. So any idea or solution that you, you bring to the table might need a couple years to get off the ground, a few more years to, to deploy, and then you only have a couple years left to see if it has any kind of measurable impact on the SDGs. So there's a sort of laser focus on practical solutions that, or ideas or collaboration efforts, projects that can be done now, between now and 2030. So what have you guys learned in the last five years? What was it like doing a project five years ago versus today? What, what are some of your key experiences here? I think the main difference is going from idea to implementation. So I think we've entered the decade of implementation, or we could even say the year of implementation. Um, I mean, we saw with the audience today, you know, what used to be just an idea, everyone's talking about ChatGPT and Dolly and Midjourney and, you know, actually they're starting to use their tools in their daily work and it's shaping how they work, how they create, how they collaborate, which raises other questions. But I think it's fair to say that AI has kind of hit the mainstream and I would even say in the last three weeks. So we've really seen a shift. Um, when the summit was created, it was more about the fear and the promise of AI. You know, is it going to create this utopian society where we don't need to work and we can just, you know, paint watercolors? <laughs> a bit of a joke, but that was one extreme. Or are we basically going to become irrelevant and where the machines take over and, you know, and everything in between? So it was really about trying to find the signal through the noise and sort things out. And we saw the narrative change from you know, the hype, and then it was maybe a bit more fear-based, like, oh, we have to be really careful, we need guard guardrails. And then it was more about, okay, what is it really good for? What is it not good for? And now we're really more, okay, it's implementation time. And, but along, I think if we didn't have those earlier conversations, we might be in worse shape now. And I, I used the analogy yesterday where, 
if we could have gone back to the late 90s and when the you know the dot-com boom and thought about okay what does this mean for humanity we would have been having discussions about privacy about cybersecurity, about online bullying and cyber threats and you, you know the, those conversations weren't taking place back then it was let's sell that pets.com for 10 million bucks that, that was a conversation that was happening so i think to avoid the mistakes of the past the conversations we're having now might have a chance to steer ai in a better direction than would have been if there were not you know these kind of guardrails or discussions yeah designing with an end-to-end -end yeah. solution mindset versus a, a point technology application so with that fred um how do you use data to inform where you spend your, your limited resources of time and focus? How does the organization prioritize and decide what to go after? That's a good question. Um, in the business world, you know, you have profit loss, red, black, and you have a very clear signal of if you're doing okay or not and how to prioritize. Uh, I think the challenge with the, the nonprofit sector is it, it's, it's not so clear, so you, you're more relying on inputs from the community to, to, to guide you. And I, I think probably the, the best framework for guidance, what would be the sustainable development goals? Because if we, let's say if you and I or the people in, in the venue today sat down in a room and had to decide what is good and how do we decide which way to go, we could spend all week and probably come up with 30 different answers. But the SDGs, you know, having been agreed upon by 193 countries, you know, 17 goals, 169 targets, that does provide a framework for focusing efforts and decision making and so you don't stray too far and, and at least you're not starting from scratch every time. So I think the SDGs as a kind of lighthouse has been a, a really important uh, framework uh, for us as an organization but also for the community that, that come to us for some kind of guidance as well. So in my experience working in the AI for good space, there's a lot easier ways to earn a paycheck. What is your why for wanting to come in and tackle some of the biggest challenges of our time? I mean, for me, it's easy. I think AI is probably gonna be the most transformational event in, in our history, really. I mean, if you look at, and it's only starting now, but I, I do believe it's going to change everything from the way we work, our, the way we collaborate, maybe future economic models, um, you know, what we value, uh, how we interact with each other. And um, it's only the beginning now, but I think it, it will transform humankind in a way that we haven't seen before. I think before it was more forces acting on us, whether it was like wars or natural disasters or, or things. And uh, but I think, yeah, that kind of gets me out of bed or keeps me up at night rather. Yeah. <laughs> keeps you from going yeah, to bed, yes, exactly. yes. Yeah. So for people that are interested in your work and want to follow along and contribute, where are the best ways to connect? Yeah, so like I said before, go to aiforgood.itu.int or just Google AI for Good, it'll go to the top and just get, get in touch. I mean, we're, we're looking for you know expertise, uh, funding, uh, volunteers, resources, people who want to spread the good word. And there's, you know, a hundred ways of getting involved. If you, for example, our pre-standardization efforts, they're very much contribution dri driven and they are, they're open, no membership fee required. Anyone can participate. So if you have use cases, if you have research, if you have knowledge that you think could advance that area, just sign up and join. It's as easy as that. If you're a startup, you know, go to the page and, you know, sign up so you can do some pitching and maybe you have a chance to win. Um, if you enjoy challenges, we have a large number of uh, machine learning challenges on, on many different topics. And actually more than participating in the challenges, we need problem statements as well. So the, the hard part is coming up with a really well formulated problem statement that people can actually solve for. So we need problem statements and we need people to compete and try to find the solutions to those uh, problem statements. And um, yeah. I think just get get in touch and see how we can. I mean, we we have events online almost every day now. Last but not least, if you can come to Geneva, if you can't, you can follow online as well and yeah, you get the best of both worlds there. Thank you so much for your time today, Fred. Really inspiring work you're doing. Oh, thank you, Lisa, and uh, great job, you know, steering the ship for these uh, past two days. Uh, excellent. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.